Okay, we're going to talk about layers, what they are and what purpose they serve in image editing software. At the moment, we'll look at layers conceptually, so you don't need Affinity Photo open for now. We'll cover how to actually add and manipulate layers in the next video. So, layers are best thought of as building blocks. They are added on top of one another to form a stack structure. These layers all combine to form the composition you see on screen. They come in various types, ranging from simple images to text, adjustments, masks, and more. Take, for example, an image that we could be working on. In Affinity Photo, this would take the form of a basic pixel layer. On top of this, if we were to place some text, it would be introduced as a new layer, this time as a text layer. At this point, we can see the stack of layers forming. Each layer added to the stack affects all the layers underneath it, unless it is explicitly told not to. Because this text layer is on top of our base image layer, it will display on top of the image. On top of these two layers, a logo for branding or watermarking could then be introduced. This would be an image layer. Again, this would display on top of the image. A feature of layers is that they can be turned off or hidden. Here, the logo layer could be hidden and it would no longer show in the document. The same could be done to the text layer. And then also the bottom pixel layer, which is the base image. To see these layers again, they could simply be shown one by one. So, our conceptual layer structure would end up looking like this in our image editing software. You can see the text positioned in the bottom right and the logo in the bottom left. Again, don't worry about recreating this in Affinity Photo just yet. We'll get to the functionality of layers soon. So the purpose of layers is to enable a non-destructive workflow. In image editing software, we perform all kinds of manipulations to our images, like sharpening, blurring, altering colors and tones, overlaying text and other elements, and painting. Instead of modifying the original image, however, we could perform all of these changes on top of the original image by introducing them as layers. So this means we could remove or revise those changes individually. For example, we might decide at a later date that we wanted to reduce the amount of sharpening applied or that some text needs repositioning. Layers give us that flexibility to experiment without locking us into a decision. Now, we don't just work with physical information when we use layers. Let's look at another example where we would have our base image labelled background. This time, we could change the tones of the image by using a brightness and contrast adjustment. Because it would be added as a layer on top of our image, we wouldn't be destroying the original image data. We could also introduce a vignette effect. This darkens the edges of the image. Again, as a layer, this would be non-destructive. And so we would be adding with this effect rather than overwriting with it. In their stack-like structure, layers can be reorganized. So the vignette could go underneath the brightness and contrast adjustment. 
This would then mean the vignette would also be affected by that brightness and contrast adjustment. So, for example, the vignette might become more pronounced as a result of increasing the brightness and contrast. Of course, the vignette could then be moved back up to above the brightness and contrast adjustment, which would then stop it being affected. Like with the text and logo, these two layers could also be hidden. Once the vignette is hidden, its effect on the image would be disabled. The brightness and contrast adjustment could also be hidden, and its effect would be disabled. Finally, as before, if we hid the background image layer, it would leave us with a blank document. Showing these layers again would build up to a final output that you would see on screen. And speaking of final output, here's what our image would look like with those adjustment and filter layers applied. So, we can summarise with the understanding that layers are a powerful way of building or constructing our document. They facilitate a non-destructive workflow, giving us greater flexibility as we work. Now, to find out how to actually add and manipulate these layers, we're going to cover that in the next video, titled Adjustments. Thank you for watching.